Hi everybody, this is Julian from RC. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can use RC Conductor to automatically route your reasoning prompts to the best SLM or LLM. Let's get started. We've already discussed Conductor in a few videos, so I'll put all the links in the video description. If you haven't signed up yet, um, this is the URL and uh, you'll get $20 of free inference credit, okay? So once you've signed up, uh, you'll be able to uh, go to the console and create an API key, which is the only thing you need to start using Conductor, okay? And creating the API key happens here. Once you've signed up, you're ready to use my notebook. So let's just go and switch to that notebook and start running examples. Enabling uh, model routing for reasoning models in Conductor is super simple. Uh, as you can see here, we'll just need to set the model to auto-reasoning, and just like we did auto-tool for function calling, okay? Everything else is absolutely the same. Uh, of course, you can still use the uh, official OpenAI client and, uh, and get to work, okay? So let's just run this. Okay, don't forget to enter your key here, which is the key you created when you signed up in the UI. Okay, now we can list available models and print a sorted list. So we see the usual suspects, the virtuosos, uh, blitz, uh, and, uh, and other models we've, uh, we've discussed in the past. Uh, we see Maestro, which is one of ours as well, and uh, that supports our uh, reasoning mode. And of course, we have auto reasoning, uh, which is the, the router mode for reasoning models. Okay, and we'll run some examples and we'll see that different models are called. Okay, so let's try a first example. This is, I guess, a simple one. Write a friendly message for a new user of RC Conductor. Maybe that's you. A conductor routes your prompt to the best model, etc., etc. Get started with 20 bucks and learn more at this URL. Okay. So we can just run this. Okay, again, model here is set to auto-reasoning. And because we are working with reasoning models exclusively here, we're going to get a, a two-part answer. We're going to see the reasoning of the model and we're going to see the actual answer. Okay, and we can see here we invoked the maestro Maestro in reasoning mode. Okay, so we got we have some internal thinking, and this is very useful actually. Always looks a bit noisy, and you know, but if you read it, it's interesting to see how how the model um, uh, works, and and what it's considering to generate the answer. Uh, you know how it's uh, reasoning uh, to to build um, what hopefully is a good answer. And by reading that, you know, m maybe you, you realize, oh, okay, yeah, I, you know, I didn't think about this parameter, or I didn't think about this factor, or I didn't think about that angle uh, in, uh, in writing the email or in, you know, writing the meeting invite or, you know, whatever it is you're uh, using the model for. And then, of course, you, uh, you get the actual answer, okay? And it's, it's pretty cool, okay? So simple prompt, um, small model, uh, we'll look at pricing uh, when we're done, but obviously this one is a smaller and uh, and less expensive model. Okay, so we see the the router doing a good job here. Okay, let's try another one. So this one is <laughs> personal interest of mine. Suggests some productivity tips for frequent intercontinental flights between Paris and San Francisco. I usually fly midday or early afternoon. I need to be productive on the plane. I work on a Mac laptop. Wi-Fi may not be available. I'm looking at you, Air France. Uh, so I need to be able to work offline. My work involves reading, writing, and coding. Okay. Let's see if AI can help me stay productive on the plane. Okay, let's run this. Oh, okay, so this is probably you know there are certainly more things to consider here so you know flight duration um, what about my different tasks health preparation checklist etc etc 
okay so all those good you know tips that are really really worth reading uh, because you say oh yeah I never thought about that you know the model is right maybe I should you know maybe I should use git to work locally um, coding on the plane is always fun okay and now here's the uh, here's the uh, the answer pre-flight preparation tools for offline work time zone and sleep management yeah I wish comfort and health productivity workflow emergency backup mental prep oh yeah pre-flight meditation why not um, anyway you know it's it's a good list uh, it's a good list it'll get you started and and we can definitely understand you know how the model came up with that list you know it's just a random it's not a random page coming from I don't know you know Wikipedia or something uh, it's uh, it's tailored to uh, to what I asked so pretty good and again we used uh, we used maestro for this okay so very cost effective okay so let's try another example let's keep doing the travel thing so uh, real life example I will attend two events in June one in DC June 9 to 13 one in San Diego June 10 12 story of my life I only need to spend the full June 10 in DC. They only need, need me for one day over there. Um, and I like to fly in the day before, obviously. And I'll fly from Paris. What are my options? So that's a really messy prompt. I just wrote it, you know, didn't pay any attention. We have overlapping dates. We have a lot of ambiguity. Um, I'm just saying, hey, I need to be in San Diego June 10, 12. I don't say for how long. I mean, this is a horrible prompt, but that's why you want reasoning models uh, because they should be able to uh, figure it out. So let's run this, see what happens there. If AI can solve my travel pain points. Okay, so, yep, there's a lot of there's a lot of thinking in there so you can you can read it if you like I'll sp I won't read it this is a bit of a scheduling conflict thank you AI I don't know if AI can solve technical evangelism let's see okay so different options this is a bit of a puzzle. Yes, my life is complicated. Thank you. Okay, off it goes. Ah, see? Even a reasonably simple prompt like that takes a bit of work. The model is working hard here. Okay, all right. So, fly from Paris to DC on June 8th. Hmm? Why not? Um, this ensures you arrive the day before your required full day in DC. Okay, makes sense. I mean, I could fly on June 9th and still be fine, I guess. Attend the DC event June 10. Mm -hmm. Depart DC on June 10 evening. Yes, depending on how late that is. To arrive in San Diego the same night. Okay, yeah, because the time zones work in this case. Example flight. Oh, well, is that a real flight? No, let's, <laughs> let's check it out. I doubt it. So the flight actually exists, but it flies from Costa Rica to San Francisco. So not quite what I was looking for. All right, so nice hallucination here, but nice try. Uh, so I'll miss the first day of the San Diego event, but I'll arrive in time for June 11 and 12. Okay, and I can spend the rest of the stay in San Diego. That looks okay. Um, you know, that looks okay. Um, because I didn't say, you know, uh, like how long I had to stay in San Diego. I didn't put any kind of constraint here. So obviously I cannot be 
uh, on June 10 in two different locations. So the model made the right call here. Okay. Key considerations. Mm -hmm. Alternative option. If the San Diego event allows lit registration, assess key session on June 11, 12, this itinerary works best. If not, consider skipping San Diego and focusing on DC. Hmm. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Okay, so as we can see here, um, this looked like a you know basic question, but it took a bit of work from the model, mostly because my prompt was fuzzy and, and ambiguous. But hey, uh, isn't that the name of the game, right? Um, that's why we need uh, models that can, you know, uh, reason, even if I don't like the word too much, uh, or at least come up with options and, and, you know, look at their own decisions and, and decide if they're working or not. Um, you know, simply because we are ambiguous folks and it's very difficult to write um, very clear prompts. So pretty pretty good here and well we use DeepSeek R1 okay so uh, we probably paid a little more but we got a good answer okay let's keep going um, explain when I should use put options to protect my portfolio of US stocks against a market downturn not that these things ever happen show me an example let's see And it doesn't look like a complicated question here, but who knows? Model is thinking. And you could probably argue it is not really a reasoning prompt. You know, it's, uh, I guess a, a vanilla SLM would, uh, would be able to answer that. Actually, we will give it a shot. Okay, so when to use put options, a concrete example, blah, blah, blah. Oh, O3 Mini. Okay. Interesting. Uh, let's try. Why don't we try, you know, why don't we try Blitz? Which is not a resilient model. Well, it looks like a good answer too. So, yep, um, probably not a proper reasoning prompt here. Okay, interesting. All right. Okay, let's try maybe a, a last one, a coding prompt. So here I have my uh, streaming function for OpenAI. Uh, text generation and the prompt is make this function more pythonic explain possible trade-offs between memory efficiency execution speed maintainability suggest what you think is the best approach all right let's give that a shot plenty of trade-offs here for sure mm, it looks like sonet to me okay so here again streaming Okay, trade-offs, memory efficiency, execution speed, maintainability. What we think is the best version, why this is best. Okay, good answer. And yeah, a lot of coding prompts go to Sony. That's uh, probably uh, one of the best models for that right now. Okay, so uh, we could continue for a while. Um, you see how easy this is. Just set uh, the model to uh, auto reasoning. Now let's take a quick look at, not the Costa Rica flight. Uh, let's look at the API history. And we'll see, as usual, you know, we'll see the price of those, uh, of those queries. Okay, so we can see, you know, the Maestro queries are, you know, all of them are under a cent. This one is actually a tenth of a cent. This one is half a cent because we ended 
end up generating a little more. Um, Deep Seek, you know, is sense a little more expensive. Um, and again, Sony is, is sense. And if you want to look at model prices, you can actually see them in the documentation or on the page here, right? So you can see Sony is, you know, three dollars for one million output tokens and fifteen for uh, it. So we can see Sony is three dollars per million input tokens and fifteen for output. Uh, DeepSeek is you know, cheaper for output. GPT, you know, about the same as DeepSeek. O3 Mini, quite cheaper. And Maestro, much, much cheaper. Okay, so 90 cents versus 3.30 compared to 3 versus 15. So, you know, 4, what is that? 4x, yeah, 4, 5x cheaper generally. So, as usual, what this means is if you send all your prompts to Sonet or, you know, maybe GPT or maybe DeepSeek, um, you're certainly overpaying um, by, a, by a, a large amount for a lot of the simple prompts. And my guesses are, and my guess is a lot of those prompts are simple enough to be handled by the smaller models. So that's the very reason why we build Conductor. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the link to the notebook, of course, will be in the video description. So give it a shot. And thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep rocking.